Tot water. We've learned that something she told the FBI under oath doesn't match what was revealed in a batch of her emails. Plus, that tell-all book on the Trump administration just keeps falling apart. We've got the latest gaffe from Fire and Fury author Michael Wolf. And President Trump has postponed revealing his fake news awards for another 10 days. But no worries. We've got our own awards to unveil tonight. We'll also expose some brand new liberal hysteria about the president and the national anthem tonight. You're not going to believe this. But first, Hollywood goes to rehab and hopes we'll move back after the movies, after the worst domestic ticket sales in 25 years. Tinseltown tried to rehabilitate its image at the Golden Globes last night. The first award show since the 2017 sex scandals. Nearly all the women were black, perhaps appropriate for a funeral where Hollywood tried to bury its past sins. The mainstream media responded with rave reviews, but did the movie making elite really accomplish anything other than making themselves feel better about their tarnished industry? Let's get into that with conservative millennial blogger Ali Stuckey in Dallas. In Washington, attorney Michelle Jawando, a vice president at the Center for American Progress. And here in New York, Fox News contributor David Webb. David, I'm going to start with you. Um, so this Weinstein deal, I mean, this has been an open secret for three decades. It doesn't take a lot of bravery to now come out and say, me too. They're a day late and a dollar short. It's a hashtag campaign. We've seen that. It's the liberal left. Let's put a hashtag on it. They're trying to cover the black eye with the black gowns, but they're not talking about the issue. What have they actually done? In the news today, have you heard one thing about Rose McGowan? No. Have you heard one thing about any of the other victims? Have you heard one thing about Charlie Rose at PBS? Have you heard anything about all of these people that have not only been accused, but the cover-ups? Have you heard about uh, Matt Lauer? Well, they didn't name names. And if you want to be courageous and you want to be brave, Allie, you name names, but they didn't do any of that. And to say, like, they have the moral high ground, that's been squandered, don't you think? Well, actually, I think that congratulations are in order for these celebrities, Jesse. I want to say congratulations to Hollywood for finally realizing what we poor, ignorant, backwards, plebeian conservatives have been saying for years, that moral relativism, especially in relation to sex and sexuality, leads to bad things, and that includes sexual assault and sexual harassment. So great job, celebrities, for finally catching up with the rest of us. You guys deserve a pat on the back oh wait you guys are already doing that that's the only thing that you did last night which really gets to the heart of my whole problem with this is that hollywood seems completely incapable of standing up for a good cause without self-righteously preaching to the rest of us about it you already mentioned this this was their sin i just agree that they were trying to bury it they were trying to project it on the rest of us they're trying to turn this industry which has been peddling sexual promiscuity for years into a pulpit from which they're are going to preach to the That's rest of us point. about how to live our lives? No, Michelle, I, 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 I'm not Jesse. here for it. <laughs> Michelle, so like, do you understand the hypocrisy for Hollywood to lecture America on sexual morality? It's kind of like Bill Clinton giving seminars and sexual harassment in the workplace. Just not the best front man. <laughs> you know what, Jesse, I, I actually have to laugh because when you think about the history of red carpet events and you think about the history of the Golden Globes, art and fashion has always been political, whether you're talking about in the 60s and 70s or in the 90s with the AIDS ribbons. So to pretend that all of a sudden uh, you're seeing this activism and this is the first time, that would just be historically and factually. No, but how, Michelle, how deep, to, how deep <laughs> no. Does the activism go though? Because it's one thing to do the hashtag and to do the little costume dress up. But really, I mean, are they putting their money where their mouths are? I don't think so, David. No, no they're not putting the their thing. money where their mouths are. And look, she's right. Hollywood's always been political. The red carpet's political. Back in the 80s when AIDS became a thing, they were on it like that. Remember Magic Johnson, yep. the red carpets. 
You said in the beginning, this was 30 years of Harvey Weinstein. Mm -hmm. Guys, you're 30 years too late to this <laughs> party. And unfortunately, really the victims no haven't had 30, anything but 30 years though? of victimhood. No, no, it's, it's are, not are about the Are we really the saying it's, that it's, there's it's, no it's, time it's to actually do the right thing? Because I think... No, we're no not this isn't about no time. This is about 30 years of waiting to do the right thing. For 30 years, Hollywood knew what was going on, and they put up with this. By the way, optics last night, Meryl Streep. What a hypocrite. This is Meryl Streep who he preys on Roman Polanski who raped, drugged and raped a 13-year-old girl then ran from the United States. And there's Meryl Streep. That's bad optics to have Meryl Streep and there. And then Meryl Streep shows up with Ajahn Poo, who's the president of <gasps> oh the my God, she actually Alliance, showed up. Okay, Workers that's Alliance. Okay, fine. But the point Showing is, up, on, says, Listen, one night of doing something up. right. This ahead, is Allie. one night of doing something right. No one is saying that wearing black is a bad thing. But my point is that I'm not really concerned with what these celebrities look like. An external protest is completely fine. What I'm more concerned with is internal honesty. I want some introspection here. What would have been a lot more appropriate than uh, these celebrities joking about sexual harassment and giving us their self-serving sanctimonious diatribes would have been a humble apology. An apology for the part they've played in perpetuating this corrupt of their industry through this so I'm going to surprise you I am power. going to agree with you that if we're only Thank talking you. about clothes a week from now then I have a problem what I do hope tomorrow brings is activism what it brings is protests and movement and people actually doing things and moving policy well and how about frankly, depositions up, and lawsuits and testimony message, because protests are not going to get this Problem who want solved. to sue their attackers, that's actually putting your money where your mouth is. I don't okay, know if and you don't know. Because well, I don't know and if we're going to be names. talking about anything besides Oprah. Because <laughs> Oprah stole the show last night, and no one's really talking about sexual harassment. Everybody's talking about Oprah Winfrey running for president. Uh, I think we have some sound of the, the Oprah mania from last night. Can we roll that, please? We begin with breaking news. Oprah Winfrey, quote, actively thinking about running for president. The one thing Oprah Winfrey has more than anyone else in the world is star power. You could close your eyes and imagine that speech being given in Iowa, let's say, right? Sure. Or, or as a campaign kickoff. That was a soaring speech. It was a very presidential speech. Her speech last night, amazing, and you couldn't help but, like, jump off your sofa <laughs> with her, right? This is one of those moments that could be her defining moment to possibly run for president. All right, David, I love <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. I admire and respect Oprah Winfrey. She gives one speech about sexual assault, and we're going to hand her the codes to the nuclear football. <laughs> That's what the media wants. Okay, so let me tell you this, America. You're being punked by Hollywood. The fact is, go back to the black gowns, go back to the lack of any discussion today, lack of any activism, I'll go with you on that, because Oprah Winfrey is simply deflection from what Hollywood has done. We're less than one year into the Trump presidency, and we're supposed to sit here and start talking about Oprah Winfrey running for president. NBC puts up a tweet. I read it on the way to my radio show, and two hours into the show, they finally take it down after they endorse Oprah Winfrey. At least they're not hiding it anymore. They endorse her for the president. America, you're being punked. Let's get to the issues that matter. Oprah is not going to run for president. Allie, let me ask you. I'm going to play devil's advocate here. She's a self-made billionaire. She has broad mass appeal. And she can sell fundraise, and Sounds she appeals familiar. to middle America. <laughs> there, there is a real threat of an Oprah candidacy if she decides to run. You'd have to admit she'd do a lot better yeah. than Pocahontas or Crazy Bernie. Yeah, I, I mean, I think so. And it's just like Donald Trump. It sounds a lot like Donald Trump. But the people who are praising her and wanting her to run for president are the same people who criticize Donald Trump for being a celebrity and having no experience whatsoever. Right. So what is it? 
So do you want a celebrity to run or not? I think it's fine if she wants to throw her hat in the ring. That's the beautiful thing about living in a constitutional republic is that anyone can run for president. If she wants to do it, fine. I will not be voting for her. Michelle, are you excited about the candidacy of Oprah Winfrey? And if so, I, I what's always... Oprah's plan on the border? <laughs> what's her plan on ISIS? What's her plan on NAFTA? Does I she does she know? I'm always excited about anything that has to do with Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> but I will say this. I think yeah. the reason why people are so excited excited and talking about her today yeah. is that she inspired the country again and there was a moment where we all collectively s believed in something together it was the aspiration that we come to expect from our leaders and that's something that's desperately need missing from this president and it's desperately needed today so that's why you have the hashtags Oprah 2020 because we want leadership and that's <laughs> drastically well, she was definitely a captivating a speaker last and she's been so captivating for so many years. Even Donald Trump was considering putting her on the ticket That's in right. 1999 in right? when he was flirting with running for president. I think we have some sound. Let's hear it. You have a vice presidential candidate in mind? Well, I really haven't gotten quite there yet. Uh, it's I about, guess it's just you Oprah. Guys. I love Oprah. Oprah would always be my first choice. Think and if she'd do it, she'd be fantastic. I mean, she's popular. She's brilliant. She's a wonderful woman. I mean, if she'd ever do it, I don't know that she'd ever do it. She's got. You'd ask you know, her. She'd be sort of like me. I mean, I have a lot of things going. She's got a lot of things going. What a ticket in terms that of be. that would be a pretty good ticket. But she's a very exceptional woman. Trump's always ahead of the curve. Uh, I would love to see the Trump nickname for Oprah if she got in the race. Oh, gosh. Um, amazing. I, I don't know. We, amazing we have some news. We actually have a new report, though, from Peter Alexander, NBC News. It's hot off the press. A source close to Oprah tells Kate News, no, as of today, she has no intention of running for president in 2020. It's not happening. She has no intention of running. Somebody tell him. Wow, NBC. it's over. <laughs> it, was, it. it took a day. Fresh candidacy. Oprah is done. Oprah's okay. out. All right. Now, on to now we get back to Warren and Biden and Bernie. All right, guys. Great. See you later. Great. Thanks. See you. Thanks, Jesse. All right, later Bye. on, we're going to take a look at one of the stranger stories to come out of the Golden Globes. Do you believe an NBC tweet endorse, uh, endorsing Oprah for president was really a mistake when it took the network 14 hours to take it down? But up next, the president said, first it was fake news, now it's a fake book. Corey Lewandowski joins us to discuss a glaring contradiction by the author of that new book targeting Trump. And we'll expose a ridiculous accusation from the left tonight that says the president doesn't know the words to the national anthem. Stay with us. Big holes keep popping up in the stories told by Michael Wolf, author of Fire and Fury, the alleged inside account of the Trump administration. Wolf told NBC yesterday that the 25th Amendment providing for removal of the president by his cabinet was, quote, a concept that is alive every day in the White House, end quote. But then he had this to say this morning. Did you speak with any members of the president's cabinet for this book? I did not. You did not? I did not. And did you speak with the vice president? I did not. Okay, so we've had a little bit of a guest issue, uh, but David Webb has kindly agreed to stick around and join us again. And in our nation's capital is David Goodfriend, who was deputy uh, secretary to President Bill Clinton, chief of staff. Now, um, <laughs> This guy never even interviewed the VP, never interviewed the cabinet officials. Um, I don't think he, he ever interviewed any of the first family. Did he talk to Ivanka? Did he talk to Eric? Did he talk to Don Jr.? Because a lot of this stuff does not ring true, David. Um, how much of this do you think is just pure fiction? Oh, this is why I don't dive into stories of palace intrigue. They're often way overblown. He says he, he spoke in, initially gave the impression that he had spoken to everyone, that he had this unfettered access. He could walk around and maybe he did for a little bit, but you've been in the West Wing. I've been in the West Wing. It's not that easy to go in and out of rooms. And now we find out he can't answer pointed questions.
These questions were never asked before the book came out. They just took it as fire and fury at Trump administration in, in its demise going down in flames. What's going down in flames is another author who wrote another book that's salacious. It's like a bad soap opera, except this one won't be back in reruns. Okay. Um, David, uh, the other David, let me ask you a question because yes. I don't understand how this makes sense. The central premise of the book is that Trump didn't want to win the election. So if he didn't want to win the election, why was he colluding with the Russians to win the election? I don't get it. Yeah, it, there's a lot of uh, kind of weird questions that pop up around this book. I'd be the first to say that as well. It kind of reminds me when I worked in the Clinton White House, you had people who would leave the White House and then write these expose books, which I thought was kind of betraying the privilege of having worked in the White House. And I think here too, we should just assume, at least I'm gonna assume, let's say 50% of everything in that book is just flat out wrong. Just write it off, 50% of it. We don't know which 50%, but in my view, if only 50% of what's been said in this book is real, it is incredibly damaging. And all you have to do is look at the president's own reaction. You know, if somebody says something about me that's a lie, I blow it off, I don't even react. This president became the first president in U.S. history to pronounce, I am sane, really, I am. And that makes me think he's protesting a little too much. Well, let me, let me tell quiet. you why the away. president has to say something like that. Because if CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, and they all spend 48 hours bringing up shrinks to say the president of the United States is crazy, and then the president of the United mm -hmm. States is asked to respond to that, the headline yeah, but, then becomes the president defends his sanity. That's how the media plays so, these games. So that's think about exactly what the media does. Hold on, let, let's, let, let's let Webb get here in. here on Fox oh. News, people said Barack Obama isn't really a citizen of the United States. That was totally crazy. Now, President Obama didn't jump out and say, I'm really a citizen. Really, I am. Here I am. <laughs> no. Well, I don't well, know who on Fox cool. News I said that. Just right. David, I, don't, I can't, I can't name one person on Fox was. News that said and that. Here, what's happening and eventually this, he did produce his birth certificate. The president himself is actually, it's, rising, it's raising the sales of the book. Now the book is becoming a bestseller precisely because Trump is talking about it. Well, that's it's true. Really, the book's uh, through the roof now. Maybe that's why Corey didn't come on the show tonight because uh, it maybe knocked his book that's down right. a few rungs on the New York <laughs> Times bestseller list. But it's so funny to be called insane by the left who's screaming at the sky, who's wearing, wearing hats yeah. with genitalia. Um, you know, Bernie Sanders thinks global warming is more of a threat than ISIS. If anybody's insane, I think it's people on the other side. Yeah, I mean, if you look at this, and I'm going to use a big word for the left now, this compendium of what's false and what's true, all these things they've said about Trump, and this is he delayed the, the fake news awards till next week. I don't really care about that. I care about policy. That's what I care about. They put all this stuff Agreed. at him, and then you attack the man. You attack his family. You attack his wife. You attack his daughter. Representative Cohen attacks an 11-year-old boy, Barron, his son, on Twitter. What do you expect a father to do? He's going to defend himself. And when President Trump became president, he didn't give up his right to say what's on his mind. No president ever has or does. And frankly, I like a guy who's going to fight because I'm sick of the left yeah, he's throwing got a punches and the Republicans not oh, counterpunching. Because he's got the entire I'll, media and the Democratic Party against him. for your him. tears. I'll send you guys a box of tissues you can wipe away. I don't want a box of <laughs> tissues, pal. Here's a, here's Let me a tell you, point, David, I love you. You're a good man. You say you like policy. But I'm like Trump. I don't need to. All right, guys, let's move on because I want to play some sound. David, I want to play some new sound that's coming in. There's yeah. this new attempt to undermine President Trump that's just unfolding tonight. He's at the College Football National Championship this evening. Earlier, he took the field right. for the anthem and he sang along. But now people on the left are claiming he doesn't know the words to the national anthem. All right, so first we're going to show you the clip that's making the rounds on Twitter. And then we've got an edited shot to show you from when he sang the whole thing word for word. Take a look. What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming. All right, so I don't know if you can see the video there, 
good friend, but I mean, the guy, yeah. he's singing along with the national anthem, and now the top trend on Twitter is saying Trump doesn't know the words to the national anthem. I mean, give it a rest. Yeah, so I, I actually looked, I looked at the video, and I think everybody should, just so that you, you take a look for yourself. And from my viewpoint, sometimes he's singing along, and sometimes he's not. Sometimes his lips are moving, and sometimes they're not. I don't know if that means he doesn't know the words. I think wait, you're jumping to conclusions. Wait, wait, so do you think the, the president of the United so, States doesn't know the words to the national anthem? No, I just think he doesn't like to sing, probably. <laughs> <People> <laughs> well, that's, that's smart. I, I mean, I don't like to sing either. You know, it's not because I, I don't know the words. Right, but here's the problem is the <laughs> left you know assigns this I mean, value. No, hang on, let, let, let The left assigns the value of he doesn't know. Same. It's what they did to, Don, to uh, Reagan. He's a dumb actor. He doesn't know what he's doing. They assign these values to people because it fits their narrative. Just like they went out and said the president was being, being booed. So I listened to it. I actually watched it live. And I rewound it and I watched it and I rewound it and I watched it. And I'm sitting there listening to this going, the first thing I said was, the left's going to come out and they're going to say he doesn't know the words when they know nothing. It's like a psychiatrist who knows he's crazy, but has actually never talked mm -hmm. to him. Right. Well, and then there's no way that so, the so president of the United States, Republican Donald Trump, is getting booed uh, when Georgia is playing Alabama down in Atlanta. Guys, I got to run, though. Well, it's, well, it's, I got to run. Well, elected a Democrat to the Senate, so you got to love Alabama. All just right. elected a Democrat All to the right. Senate. There's hope for them yet. Roll Tide. Yeah. Hillary's right and woman, Huma Abedin may have a new reason to worry. Coming right up, we'll tell you what she said to the FBI under oath that doesn't match what was revealed in her emails. Welcome back to the Ingram Angle. I'm Jesse Waters in for Laura Ingram. Hillary Clinton's top aide, Huma Abedin, may have reason to worry she could end up facing perjury charges. The Daily Mail reported Aberdeen backed up copies of work-related emails with the former Secretary of State on the laptop of her now-estranged husband, Anthony Weiner. That would contradict what Aberdeen said under oath to the FBI. Let's dig into this with attorney Scott Bolden, former chair of the Democratic Party in D.C., and Ned Ryan, former speechwriter for President George W. Bush, joins us from Virginia. I think I butchered your name, Ned, but you know what? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> you know what? That's okay, Jesse. We know, we know who he is. Yeah, we know who he is. We can see what he That's looks right. like. Now, I guess the, the allegation is that Huma lied under the oath to the FBI and, and mishandled classified information and even disseminated classified information to her sex offender ex-husband. Are we going to have to lock her up now with her ex-husband? I mean, hasn't she been through enough? Well, not at all, in my opinion. I, I don't know who you want to, want to go to, but let me be real clear with you. I'm not concerned at all about her being charged with perjury because whatever her inconsistent statement was, it had no material effect on the outcome of the investigation, nor would the FBI go back or DOJ go back and take a look at that. Because what emails did she not, did she say she backed up? The same emails from the State Department. The FBI found those emails, reviewed them, and shut down the investigation. Why? Because there was no material Scott. difference or impact. And so whether that's you agree crazy. with that or not, that's what the law is. It may not politically it may sound crazy to you, but legally and, and, and as a former prosecutor, First of all, not a prosecutor in this country is going to go back and prosecute her. OK, for inconsistent no may, may mean something like First of not telling the truth to some other attorneys. Go ahead, Ned. Well, well, first of all, Jesse, I state the obvious here. When no normal American is going to have top secret and classified emails on their personal computer, and this was done knowingly. She, she knowingly forwarded. She knowingly backed up these emails on her personal computer. This was intentional. And you look at what the, how the Clintons and their cronies acted. For them, it was a different set of rules. For them, really, the law was like a series of suggestions that they could either follow or not follow at their convenience. And to, to lie to a federal agent. So this is, this is one of my biggest issues, Jesse. General Michael Flynn was pled guilty to lying to a federal agent. 
So if Michael Flynn is guilty, Cheryl Mills and Huma Abedin are also guilty. And if they're not guilty, why is he guilty? And I think this speaks to a much bigger issue that we're dealing with in our country about the rule of law. We have a bifurcated justice system in which some people are guilty and others aren't. And those that aren't, it's because of their last names. Right. Or so, their Scott, speak to that issue, because regardless of what you think about what our guest just said, I think that most Americans believe that there are different set of rules for people exactly. in power in the There's swamp. There. And then regular Americans. There certainly aren't. The DOJ oh, no, has discretion. There aren't different sets of standards. You know if this person okay, wasn't named Abedin or wasn't named Clinton, something. they'd be let behind you bars. Something. You want to prosecute Uma Abedin for perjury, right? I don't. Versus I think she's been through statement. enough. She's been Absolutely. married to so Anthony Weiner for 10 years. So I mean, <laughs> Jesus. So I mean, DOJ hasn't she done enough time? DJ, DOJ and FBI aren't going to go back and look at this. One, she's been cleared. But two, what was her inconsistent statement about? Whether she backed up her emails. They went back and found that she backed up the emails. But what were the emails? They weren't new. They were the same State Department emails that she had testified oh, to. Some of those were no, no, no. There were 18 no, classified no, emails that were found that in were Anthony Weiner's laptop. Of course, because because uh, they were backed I'm up. I'm also going to say is you something. Can't okay, well, that's against the law just there. Up. All right, well, hold on, Ned, no, no, Ned. No. Investigation They're the same emails that DOJ, the DOJ looked at already. The Ned, let me broaden this out. Let that's me broaden this out down. for you right now. Hold on one second, guys. Let me broaden it out. So you have this issue. And then you have the dossier that was paid for to dig up fake dirt on Trump with the Russians. And then you have Uranium One. And now you have pay to play at the Clinton Foundation being looked at by the DOJ. Proven. Okay, they're looking at it. They're looking at it. That, okay. I mean, that's that's two, three to four issues. Even the Hezbollah, they go soft on Hezbollah in order to do that's the right, Iran deal. Allegations. Those are four Andrew, items conjecture. that involve Hillary Clinton that conjecture. are now being looked at by the Department of Justice. That's a lot, considering that most of the allegations are regarding Donald Trump, and they haven't found anything on him. They haven't found anything. Stay and they've tuned. been doing this. They've been doing this investigation for 18 months. Well, let me Scott, one at a time. You know Scott, you know Scott, 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 one at a time. Go you ahead, Ned. You can respond. One at a time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know what? I think a lot of us find highly suspect any investigations done under the DOJ, under Eric Holder and Loretta Lynch, and under the FBI with James Comey because of the political nature that I think the DOJ and the FBI were under under those three and their leadership. That all to say, I think we need to go back, fully conclude these investigations, and really get to the bottom of it. Was it a pay-to-play scheme? Was the Clinton Foundation a slush fund? Why did the Uranium One deal take place? But even, Jesse, as you're looking at some of the stuff that's taking place, with example, for, with Bruce Orr, the number four guy at DOJ whose wife was hired by Fusion GPS to investigate Donald Trump, he didn't find it within himself to mention this to anybody, even though he met with Christopher Steele, even though he met with yep. Glenn Simpson. This calls into question, I think the only silver lining, Jesse, in this mm -hmm. entire Mueller investigation, it has shown us where the real investigation needs to happen, which is under a highly politicized and corrupt DOJ and FBI under the Obama administration. All right, Scott, and, 30 seconds. You have the last word. Go ahead. And, and on the, the Trump administration, you don't think DOJ is corrupt. Let me get this right. You want Jeff Sessions to investigate Hillary Clinton and other issues regarding Hillary Clinton, the same DOJ or attorney general who, who at, at, at Trump rallies chanted, lock her up, lock her up. Lock her up. Now, I'm glad we're in the political space talking about this because that dog won't hunt in the legal space and it's not going to happen. They've been cleared. Hillary Clinton and her husband oh. have invest been Is investigated that why the FBI at least 100 times. The investigation oh, no. the Clinton Foundation? With new evidence. With new evidence. Hillary Clinton and her husband have been investigated at least 100 times. And you know what? They've never been charged, never been prosecuted, never even been indicted. Yep. Okay? Well, because so they've the gotten a lot of special treatment and happen. that's definitely been looked By the at Democrats and, and the admitted to by the FBI and the and DOJ. The but guys, have been part of those investigations we got to run. I'm sure She's we're going to be clear. talking about Clinton scandals for another year or so. It's good TV. You're so going to have to wait nine days to hear President Trump's fake news awards. But you only have to wait a minute or two to hear our own awards for media mischief. So stay right there. President Trump has delayed his fake news awards until a week from Wednesday. But what? That doesn't mean we don't have to wait. We're going to hand out our own media awards tonight. And these are just from the last two days. We're going to recognize the work of such luminaries, Carl Bernstein and Mika Brzezinski. 
But our first award for, quote, lack of impartiality goes to an entire network, NBC. NBC called Oprah Winfrey our future president in a tweet last night on its official account. Then it took 14 hours to take the tweet down. Then NBC blamed some mysterious third party for posting the tweet. Yeah, we wouldn't want to get the impression the Peacock Network is rooting against President Trump or anything. So let's bring in Fox News host of Media Buzz, Howard Kurtz, in our Washington studio. So, Howard, this is like blaming the intern, except they're blaming a third party. I don't even know what that means. What's a third party? I think we need a special prosecutor to find out who this <laughs> mysterious third party is. Look, this was like a parody of a left-wing organization, particularly the Our President part. And the thing about it is, you know, um, what this suggests to me is the 14-hour delay. Either the NBC executives were up all night partying after the Golden Gloves <laughs> and were too out of it to do anything until noon, yeah. or they didn't realize there was anything wrong with the President Oprah tweet until they started getting some criticism in the press, Jesse. Well, they've been getting a lot of bad press. I think the NBC franchise said that the Trump tax cut wasn't going to help workers. And then NBC, after the Trump tax cut passed, started giving out all $1,000 bonus checks to their workers for Christmas. So um, they haven't had a great track record over there at NBC. Um, but you know what? That's who they are, and I think they're just in it for the money and the ratings. Let's get Unlike to our... Unlike everybody else in television. Of course not. Of course not. <laughs> we don't care about the ratings at all. Uh, let's get to our next word. Remember Carl Bernstein? He's the other Watergate reporter, the one whose career took a little bit of a different turn than Bob Woodward's. But some people still apparently want to hear what he has to say. And here's, what he, here's why he wins our Words Have No Meaning Award. Roll it. Yes, we're in a real constitutional crisis in an unprecedented place. How do we uh, deal with this? Are we in a constitutional crisis, Speaker Ryan, uh, Leader uh, McConnell? We need to keep our heads down and just keep going after the story and stay calm about it and recognize we are in a constitutional crisis and we have a special responsibility. Amen. To our did you get that? There's a constitutional yeah. crisis. I kind of was getting that impression. Look, Carl Bernstein attacks uh, President Trump just about every day or every week. I mean, he's called him a liar. He's called him worse than Nixon. He's talked about the malignant presidency. And, you know, he gets a lot of attention because there's a sort of the Watergate aura about what right. he says, although, and he actually worked on the original story about the unverified Russian dossier. The thing is, uh, you know, to compare, even in the worst possible interpretation, to compare their allegations against President Trump and his associates uh, in the Russia case to the scandal that made Bernstein famous is just a ludicrous stretch. Okay, and if everything is a constitutional crisis, then nothing is. I think that's the fourth or fifth reference that he used. I think there was the, the Mueller firing was a constitutional crisis. A tweet was a constitutional crisis. Now the 25th Amendment, we're going to look at a constitutional crisis. We got it, Carl. We got it. All right, and last but not least, the Lack of Self-Awareness Award goes to MSNBC's Mika Brzezinski. It doesn't seem to realize that her friend's attitudes may just reveal something about her. I had some friends that went to Paris over the holiday, and they said they were viscerally... Paris, Texas, right? Paris, France. Oh, Paris, France. And they said they were just That's viscerally movie, embarrassed to be Americans. Yes, they said it was, it was the first time that it was sort of chilling, that they didn't even want to share <clears throat> where they were from. Okay, well, I don't think any American should be embarrassed in Paris, because if it wasn't for America, they'd all be speaking German. <laughs> <laughs> Going for the, playing the World War II card. Look, well, Mika listen, comes I play from, that as much as possible. <laughs> Mika comes from a Democratic family. Right. She does hang out with people who consider Donald Trump an embarrassment. She said much harsher things about him uh, on Morning Joe, but it does come after a period of time when she and Joe Scarborough had a very bitter falling out with President Trump, with whom they had been friendly for years. And in fairness, President Trump has personally attacked Mika Brzezinski, low IQ and all of that on Twitter. So I don't think there's any question that she is sharing her opinions. And I don't think you're shocked that she hangs out with people who don't hold Donald J. Trump in the highest regard, Jason. It does showcase the kind of elitism. And I like Mika. I think she's talented. And I've watched that show a few times. And she's interesting. And she looks like fun. But... To, you know, to talk about your friends that are vacationing in Paris and they're ashamed to be Americans. I just don't know about the rest of the American audience when they see her talking like that. 
if they really even care to relate. I don't think they do. It's like the foreign correspondents say, I just interviewed the cab driver, and here's what he has to say about American <laughs> politics. <laughs> no, it definitely doesn't come off as uh, down to earth, I should say, <laughs> but I don't think she really cares too much about appearing down to earth. Howie, thanks for joining us, and we're looking forward to Good next to Wednesday's edition of the Fake News Awards. All right, the more Washington learns about that Trump-Russia dossier, the more likely it looks that some of the investigators are now under investigation themselves. Ed Henry joins us next with the latest on just who may have colluded with whom. Fox News' Ed Henry was on the Ingram Angle a few weeks ago to tell us how the top Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, was worried Republicans were about to shut down their investigation into Russia. Now, he may wish they would. Not only has no hard evidence of collusion between the president's team and the Russians emerged, the committee's focus has now turned to whether the Obama administration used a dodgy dossier to spy on Trump campaign officials. Let's get an update on where things stand from Ed Henry in Washington. Jesse, good to see you. It is looking more and more like the House Intel panel investigation is going to heat up this month, but maybe not in the way that Adam Schiff wanted. When last we reported on the top Democrat on the panel late last year, he was seen leaving closed door testimony with Donald Trump Jr. just before a series of leaks from that testimony started popping up on CNN, The New York Times and other media outlets raising questions about his handling of that sensitive information during that testimony. Now, new tonight, I'm told that Schiff keeps asking for more witnesses to try and prove collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia that has not panned out. That is being rejected by Republican Chairman Devin Nunes, who is instead bringing in this month a series of witnesses that may bring more damaging revelations on the other side. Top FBI and Justice Department officials who allegedly went easy on Hillary Clinton. And more revelations as well about Fusion GPS and that dossier you mentioned paid for in part by the DNC and the Clinton camp. So Nunes is now planning to bring in eight witnesses, including FBI officials Peter Strzok and Lisa Page, who exchanged those anti-Trump text messages. Messages. Another witness, we're told, will be Obama Justice Department holdover Bruce Orr, who was just stripped of another title. He is now no longer the head of the Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Forces. Orr will testify January 17th about critical issues such as the fact that his wife worked for Fusion GPS. Now, Adam Schiff, the top Democrat on the panel, who has seemed to buy into every Russia allegation involving the president, got called out on CNN yesterday for seeming to dismiss the allegations against top FBI and justice officials before he did any investigating. Watch. How do you not know uh, that it's a legitimate investigation? Uh, I mean, I thought that the whole idea was we're supposed to believe that the FBI and the people at the Justice Department are, are men and women of integrity. If they are investigating Hillary Clinton, it doesn't take a genius, let alone a stable genius, to see why. Uh, it's not because there's some new evidence that's come to light. It's because they're being badgered by the White House to do it. With all due respect, Congressman, aren't you contributing to the uh, lack of faith in these institutions? Now, Devin Nunes also scored a big victory on Friday when TD Bank turned over more bank records for Fusion GPS. The key is we're hearing this will reveal more about Fusion GPS's clients, but also their relationships with media companies. So there could be more journalists who were either on the payroll or working in some way with Fusion GPS. These could be big revelations, Jesse. Okay, so it looks like bottom line shifts a leaker. Uh, this guy at Justice, Bruce Orr, was demoted because he's having secret meetings with the dossier firm. And the dossier mm -hmm. firm's bank records are going to get cracked open. Who knows where this money was flowing in from? And Correct. then these kind of anti-Trump uh, FBI agents that were sending these kind of love texts to each other, they're in the crosshairs. This whole thing's now boomeranging. What kind of repercussions could all of this see? Well, well, as you mentioned, the key question that Devin Nunes is trying to get at is, was it the dossier and these behind the scenes maneuverings by FBI and Justice Department officials more friendly to the Obama administration than to Donald Trump? 
Is that what led to the surveillance approved right. by Obama officials that then eventually led to Robert Mueller? Is that just a conspiracy theory that conservatives have been pushing, or is there hard evidence to show that there was a direct correlation? That evidence is not there yet, but there are pieces of it as you start putting this together that are obviously very alarming. I, let's just look ahead really quickly because we only have a few more seconds. Yeah. If they can prove that the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC paid for this fake dirt from this dossier firm to smear Trump with, and the mm -hmm. dossier was used by the DOJ under Obama to justify surveillance of President Trump, which sparked this whole probe. What does that mean? I mean, he, what, is that, he, what could that say? And could someone be punished for that? Here's one of the key pieces that you're getting at, which is that the FISA law, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, that where a judge would approve this surveillance of Trump aides, there's very specific parts of the law, I'm told, and